In this video, we're going to make an enemy view cone to detect the player. This is a line of sight effect that interacts with walls that the enemies cannot see through. If the player is found inside the view cone, it's game over. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. So in a previous video, we made this very nice field of view effect. It's attached to the player and as I move around, you can see the effect interact with the various walls. And now in this video, we want to take this effect and apply it to the enemies instead of the player. An example of this type of effect being used is in the awesome Commandos and Desperados games. I spent a lot of time during my childhood playing those games and always loved the view cone mechanic. That's also one of the reasons why my very first Unity game, Survivor Squad, was using this same effect. You can pick up that game and its sequel included in the game bundle. So this is our final goal. Here I am moving around in my ninja character, and the enemies as you can see are patrolling around and each of them has a nice view cone. The view cone is the line of sight effect where it collides with our walls. So if I stand behind this wall I'm perfectly safe. However if I step inside the view cone and there you go he targets and shoots me instantly. Now I can hit restart and now in here let's try to avoid them and go through the whole map so that one is coming down now wait and now he's going away now I can go through and try to go and go through these two and now wait for this one and when he goes down he goes away now pass and run and yep there you go I've reached my trophy and I won the level all right awesome so just like this I've made it and won this nice stealth minigame all right so this is our goal let's get to it so here's our starting effect we're starting where we left off in the field of view video in that video we created this effect completely from scratch so check the link in the description and now in here the first thing we want is to apply this same effect but to the enemies instead of the player so here's the scene from the end of the previous video as you can see I have the character and then the field of view and here we are in this scene which has a nice level all these shadows here are the various enemies and we start down here and have to reach the trophy at the end in there so here we have the field of view from the previous video let's see how this is working the way that it's working is essentially by having a serialized field for our field of view script. And then on update, we call set the aim direction and set the origin. All right, so now instead of using this in here, let's use it in our enemy code. Here is the enemy script. Now in here, the way this script is set up isn't really relevant for our effect. He's just walking around a certain patrol path. Here they are in our scene. As you can see, all of them, they go from certain positions and they follow along with their patrol, okay? So here on the script, let's do what we did for the other one. We're going to add a serialized field for our field of view. Okay, and then we just need to go into our update. And here on our update, we simply call set the origin to be this transform.position. And we also call set the aim direction. All right, so just like that, with two function calls, we should be able to see it working. So back in the editor, let's just apply to this enemy in here. So we drag the field of view script onto that field, okay. And now let's test. And yep, there it is. Just like that, you can see that this enemy now has a field of view effect. And as you can see, it is correctly interacting with the walls and we can pause. And here we can see that the mesh is indeed correct. All right, awesome. So you can see how simple this was to add because of how cleanly we created our original class. There's no references to the player directly, so our code is very clean and easy to reuse. So now with this working, let's apply it to all our other enemies. Now here in the editor, we could just duplicate this game object and set it like we did for this one, but that would be a bit messy, so let's set it up on the enemy start method instead. So for that, we're going to want to instantiate this game object, so let's drag it into here in order to make a prefab. Okay, there it is. Now here on the enemy class, let's add a field for the prefab instead. And then we're just going to have a normal field of view. Okay, let's drag the prefab reference. Here we are and let's drag this reference, okay. And now here let's go into our start method. And in here let's instantiate our prefab. So we instantiate our prefab, then we get the component field of view in order to get our new field of view. All right, so that should do it. Let's see. And yep, there it is. And now all of our enemies now have their own field of view. So you can see all of them already have it and it's all very nice. All right, awesome. 
Now let's make the angle and view distance customizable for each enemy. So up here, let's just add two more fields. Let's add a float for the FOV. And then another float for the view distance. And here, the way we create our field of view class makes this very easy. We can simply go into it and we set the FOV to this FOV and set the view distance. All right, there it is, very nice. Now we can go into the editor and here each enemy now has the fields in here for the FOV and view distance. And yep, here we are, and you can see that each enemy does indeed have a different field of view and view distance. So here we are, these are very short, down, very long, and so on. All right, great. Now let's deal with the enemy actually detecting the player. So here on our enemy script, let's go to our update. And here we're going to make a function. Let's call it find target player. And we're going to call this on our update. Okay, so now in this function, let's first calculate just the distance to the player. So we're going to do an if a vector three dot distance between this position and the player position. And if that distance is under our view distance, then the player is inside the view distance. So if he is, let's start attacking. Okay, so here we are, and let's test it out with this enemy. So I go in here, now let's move inside his view distance, and yep, there you go, he attacked me instantly. Okay, great, so we are correctly testing the player distance. Now, obviously, we also need to test for the angle. So here with just the view distance, you can see that if I go out here, in theory, I'm outside of his angle, but we're just testing for distance, so he hits me instantly. All right, so now that we're correctly testing the distance, let's also test for the angle. So, okay, here we are, we're testing inside distance, all right. Now in here, let's calculate the direction to the player. So here we have our direction to the player. And now in here, we need to calculate the angle between the direction to the player and our actual aim direction. Now Unity already has a great function to do just that. It's the vector three dot angle. This returns the angle in degrees between a from and a to. So it tests the angle between the aim direction and the direction to the player. So this returns our angle. Now all we need to do is test if this angle is less than our field of view. So if it's less than the FOV. However, in here, the field of view variable contains the total field of view. Since we are calculating the angle from the middle direction, we're going to be inside the field of view if we are smaller than half of the field of view. Okay, that should do it, let's test. Here we are, okay, and there's our enemy. Now let's move in here on the side and let's go inside his view distance. And yep, there you go, he cannot spot me since I am not inside his field of view. And now I move from the side into his field of view and yep, there you go, he finds me instantly and shoots me. All right, awesome. Now the last thing we need is to make sure that the player is actually visible inside the field of view. So as you can see, his field of view goes all the way in here, then the view distance is in here. But in here, it's blocked by that wall. So in theory, if I go in there, I shouldn't be spotted. But right now, yep, I am spotted. Okay, so let's deal with that. Okay, so back in here, we're testing for the view distance, then for the field of view. And now finally, let's also make sure that there's nothing in between the enemy and the player. So here, we can simply go into our physics 2D to do a nice raycast. The origin is this get position. For direction is the direction to the player. Then for distance, let's do our view distance. So this returns a raycast hit 2D. And now in here, let's test if we hit something. So if the collider is not known, then we hit something. And now let's test if that something is the player. So here we go into the game object, we get the player component. If it is not known, then we have hit the player. So here we start hitting him. And if it is not the player, then we hit something else, so we ignore it. All right, let's see. Okay, here I am, there's the enemy. First, let's try on this side, and yep, there you go. I'm inside the view distance, but not inside the FOV, so he's not hitting me. Now let's go into the other side, and let's go inside in here, let's wait for that one to go. 
go inside and yep he's not hitting me and now if i move inside his field of view yep there you go he starts hitting me all right awesome so we now have our nice enemy detection working they test for inside the view distance then inside the field of view and finally not hidden behind any wall so again here we are and that enemy can only spot me if i'm inside this view distance inside the field of view and not hiding behind so in here i'm fine and i can move in here and i try to go and i die instantly so just like this, we already have a very nice effect that would be suitable for any sort of stealth or horror game. Okay, so now I can try to make my way through the entire map and reach my goal. So get past this one. Okay, now that one is coming. Wait for him to go. He's coming. Wait. And yep, now I go, now I go, 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 go. Yep, now I'm in here. Now wait for both of them. And yep, go, 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 go. Now that one is going. Wait for him to go there. Now let's wait for him to go back. And yep, yep, and there you go. I won. I got to the trophy. All right, awesome. So this is a really great effect if you're working on any sort of stealth or horror game. You can use it on the player like we did in the previous video, or add it to the enemies like in here. Now you could expand upon this further to implement the crouch zone like in Commandos and Desperados. You could also add a smooth rotation to the enemy so their view cones were easier to avoid. If you want to see the underlying field of view effect used in a complete game, then check out my Survivor Squad games included in the game bundle. Those games are all about controlling your survivors and managing each field of view to make sure you cover all the corners. Personally, I really enjoy it, and Survivor Squad Gauntlets is definitely one of my favorite games. So go play it to see how you can apply this effect to your own games. As always, you can download the Project Files and Utilities from UnityCodeMonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.